Today, I'm gonna to tell you where you shouldn't buy a house. Over the last year, housing markets across the US have slowed down a whole bunch. We're seeing fewer home sales, lower prices, fewer houses on the market, and desperate real estate agents pulling shifts at Taco Bell. One aspect of this is the home prices. Besides not having enough homes on the market, they don't have enough buyers. So people are lowering the price of the homes they have for sale. That isn't the case everywhere. There are still places in the United States where folks are shelling out more cash for a house House than they're really worth. The Department of Housing and Urban Development says that if you're spending more than 30% of your monthly income on your home, it's a bit of a strain on your wallet. It depends on which study you look at, but most economists and people that are really good at math and they own easels and calculators and stuff like that say that you should spend between 25 and 28% of your monthly income on housing. If you're spending over 30%, this means you have a lot less cash for important stuff like clothes, car insurance, health insurance, and Starbucks. Now, in this video, we are going to list what percentage of the average Joe's average salary would have to go to housing to live in this city. One thing I will tell you is we eliminated some cities in Hawaii because that's a different situation. Most of the homes there are second homes for really rich people and it really throws off the numbers. Basically places where the average Joe doesn't live because 105% of their salary would be going to housing end up selling feet pics. So that's what we're doing today. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Orlando, Florida. People say living in Orlando, Florida must be like you're on a never ending vacation. Maybe the locals don't feel that way because occasionally you get mail reminding you that it's actually real life and the rent or the mortgage is due. Orlando is where you can find yourself spending your Sunday mornings deciding between hitting Disney World, Universal Studios, or SeaWorld. Let's talk money. Orlando's cost of living is a little high and it has a reputation for doing a magic trick on your wallet. It's not quite abracadabra you're saving disappears, but it's not far off. Housing prices in Orlando have been soaring faster than SeaWorld, distancing themselves from the whale riding show. So while living in Orlando might make every day feel like you're at a theme park adventure, just remember the real thrill comes from trying to balance your budget at the end of every month. Half the people living in Orlando can't afford to go to the theme parks. Orlando's home values are about 42% higher than the national average. The median home value in Orlando is $373,000. Now remember, they say 30% of your income should go to housing. In Orlando, the average Joe spends about 43% of his income on housing. Number nine, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix is the most populated state capital in the United States and the only state capital with more than 1 million residents. That probably won't be the thing for much longer. Austin, Texas is catching up quick. Only about 40% of the people who live in Phoenix were born in Arizona. Arizona is a lot like California in that respect. Far too many out-of-staters living there and most of the residents who were born in Arizona are first generation. But living in Phoenix, Arizona is like living in a sauna with a skillet floor set on high most of the year. The cost of living, like the temperature, is a little high for most people. It's like the city took the dry heat thing and applied it to your wallet, slowly dehydrating your cash reserves. They've got a high cost of living and a pretty high home value for being in the desert. I'm sure it would be a lot less if people hadn't been flooding in there for retirement over the decades. Phoenix, as you can imagine, has some of the highest utility costs in the country. Or I shouldn't say the cost, the average bill is very high and that has to do with running your air conditioning 24 hours a day. Remember everyone, the smaller your house is, the cheaper it is to keep cool. I had one guy give me a hard time. When you move to Arizona, you don't need an air conditioner. A swamp cooler is just fine. I was like, okay, lizard man, whatever you say. That's something my dad would say, honestly. But when you start looking at the home prices here, you start thinking a tent may be a viable alternative. The average home value in Phoenix is $414,000. That's the fourth quarter 2023 numbers, by the way. The average Joe spends about 44% of their income on housing in Phoenix. About 14% higher than it should should be. Number eight, Boston, Mass, or Massachusetts. I said that a while back and threw some guy from the Netherlands off. He didn't know what I was talking about. Living in Boston is like being in a relationship with a high maintenance partner who demands you pay for everything, including their expensive tastes, but you stick around because of the history and the clam chowder, I guess. Boston is notorious for its sky high rent prices. They're so high, you figure you might as well buy a house, but then you look at the house prices and you go, I can't afford a house. I guess I got to rent. It isn't just housing. The cost of living, including 
goods, services, and utilities, they're all really high in Boston. Boston is one of those cities I would love to live in, a couple years at least, but honestly, it's just too expensive. It wouldn't be worth it. I mean, the history alone just draws me to this city. Sure, I can go visit for a couple days, a week, or whatever, but you just wouldn't be able to see enough. I want to be able to walk the streets that so many of the people from our history walked, you know? It's, I don't know. It's just always been this magical place to me. Then again, I'm a history nerd, so how could it not be? Last time I did visit, we went out on the north end. I don't think I'll be doing that again. That was expensive. Tried to get a decent dinner and drinks, and I almost became an indentured servant. I just read this historical thing about how many Irish were indentured servants back in the day here in the United States. I'm sure that included quite a few of my relatives. But that's all part of the charming, wallet-emptying experience of living in Beantown or visiting. The average home value in Boston, Massachusetts, it's $707,000. That's actually a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. The average Joe in Boston has to spend about 45% of their income for housing. And that's just going off the average annual income. There's plenty of people in Boston making $3 million a year, and they're probably spending, you know, 5% of their income on housing. Number seven, Portland, Oregon. Living in Portland, Oregon is like being in a quirky indie movie where the cost of living and the local government play the main villain. It is the type of town where you could ride your bike to a vegan donut shop, attend a yoga class in a brewery, and still not have enough money left over to buy a house or pay rent without having four roommates. But we always have enough money for coffee. That's weird. The city is notorious for its keep Portland weird vibe, but it seems like the real weirdness is how quickly you burn through money living in this city. Now, we've gone over Portland many times before, so I don't have to tell you that they just have this outrageous homeless situation, and the city's been in bad shape for quite a few years now. We've said that many times on this channel. We've gone over it, but I still get people in the comment, I noticed how you didn't mention the homeless, Briggs. And my personal favorite, your bias is showing. Of course it is. I'm human. All humans are biased. One good thing about Portland, well, actually a couple good things about Portland is hiking is free, and there's plenty of places to do that here in Portland, Oregon. After your hike, it's probably raining. Take off your shirt, take a shower, you'll be good to go. The average home value in Portland, Oregon is $515,000. 47% of the average Joe's salary goes to housing in Portland, Oregon. Number six, New York City. New York City has been called the city that never sleeps. If you ever visit Vegas, you'll think the same thing could be said there too. The best thing about being in New York City is you're constantly surrounded by some of the best restaurants, theaters, and museums in the world. But enjoying them often gives you a feel like you've been mugged afterwards. Your money's gone, your wallet's probably gone, and you just want to get back to your six by eight apartment you pay $4,000 for. You know, a typical night in New York City. Renting a tiny apartment can cost you an arm and leg in New York City, and that's before you even think about the cost of utilities, groceries, and those tempting nights out on the town. But despite the hefty price tag, the experience of living in the Big Apple is something truly unparalleled, making all those expensive feel almost worth it, at least to some of us. We all can't be the same, or life would be pretty boring. The average home value in New York City is $1,122,000. That's brutal. The good news is, people living there make a lot of money, so the average Joe puts about 48% of his income towards housing. Number five, Seattle. Ah, yes, Seattle, one of my favorite cities where the coffee flows like water and occasionally you get to see Mount Rainier. It's not too far from the city, but since it's always overcast, cloudy, or raining, you don't get to see it that often. Everything in Seattle is expensive. Rent, housing, utilities. You're constantly playing that game. How much of my paycheck can I spend on a shoebox apartment and still afford a daily meal? You do a little number crunching, then you go to REI's website and start looking at tents, and that's how it begins. Seattle is a very expensive place. I've looked at housing there, looking at buying a house, things like that. It is terribly expensive, especially very expensive for what you're getting. It's like California prices without all the sunshine. The average home value in Seattle is $815,000. The average Joe spends 50% of his paycheck on housing there. That's why so many people that work in Seattle don't live in Seattle. They can't afford it.
Number four, Sacramento. Sacramento is California's oldest incorporated city, officially incorporated on February 27th, 1850. Living in Sacramento has its perks. It's not too far from the mountains and it's not too far from the beach. At least that's what they say. I grew up in a beach community, so in my opinion, 10 minutes away from the beach is pretty far. They're like an hour, hour and a half, depends on where you go. But they still say they're close, so we'll go with it. Living in Sacramento is not cheap even though it's an hour or so away from the ocean. Rent prices have been creeping up over the last handful of years, making finding a decent place without breaking the bank kind of a challenge. And it's not just the rent and mortgage and all that. It's everything. Just going out for a meal and grabbing coffee feels like you're constantly reminded that your paycheck can only be stretched so far. If you move to Sacramento, just be prepared to do a little budgeting. Sacramento has a lot of crime. Sacramento has a lot of homeless people. Despite all that, there's a lot to love about this city. It's got a great downtown, endless outdoor activities. Now I say great downtown, you gotta navigate some campsites, but other than that, it's pretty nice. But housing is expensive in Sacramento. The average home value in Sacramento is $462,000. And 51.1% of the average Joe's average income goes to housing here. Number three, Jackson, Wyoming. Jackson, Wyoming is one of the most beautiful cities you could live in or around. I've been here several times in the last few years, and each time I think, you know what, I, I might live here someday. Then I start looking at real estate prices and I change my mind. If you look on Zillow right now, there is only one place for sale that's under a million dollars, and that's south of Jackson down in South Park. And it's going for 990000 I'm looking at some of the homes for sale. Here in Portland, Oregon, I would say some of these go for 800000 In Jackson, it's going for like $2.5 million. And the Portland metro area supposedly has pretty high real estate prices. This place is insane. They have some really nice homes here that aren't crazy nice. They're, they're decent and I'd be happy to live in any one of them. But they're not those take your breath away type houses. They're just really nice. They go for about $4 million. You want one of those blow your mind type houses? There's none for sale right now. But if you do find one, it's probably going for over $8 million. This is a beautiful city and a beautiful area. The stats are really good. Other than cold weather, there isn't much wrong with Jackson, Wyoming. One guy explained buying a house in Jackson, Wyoming as the same as buying a car for $10,000 more because the dealership was far better decorated. If you like to ski, you like to be outdoors, and you like to look at beautiful mountains, move to Jackson, Wyoming. You have to be rich to live there. The locals, if they're living there, they're living there because they got their house gifted to them from like a relative or something. Just been in the family so long, it never really costs you much. The average home value in Jackson, Wyoming is $2,023,000. Yeah, you heard me right. The average Joe would have to spend 57.5% of his income on housing to live in Jackson, Wyoming. So that tells you if you are working there, you're getting paid pretty good, but it's still not enough to live there. Number two, San Jose, California. Being a resident of San Jose, California is like having a front row seat to the tech world's biggest party, but you realize you forgot your wallet at home when it comes time to chip in for the pizza. This is a city where the weather's almost always perfect, where billionaire tech moguls Play a weird modern day Game of Thrones. But if you do move there and let's say you're making $75,000 a year, you won't have to worry about what those tech moguls are doing because you'll be too busy selling pictures of your feet and collecting aluminum cans just to pay your rent. The average home value in San Jose, California is $1.3 million. The average Joe spends 63.2% of their income on housing if they live here. All right, before we get to number one, if you're looking to move to any place in the United States, there's a link for a website called Home and Money in the description area below. They can help you get in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. All right, on to number one. And number one, San Francisco. Yeah, I bet you didn't see this one coming. If you want to live in San Francisco, first of all, imagine paying a gazillion dollars to live in a shoebox. While in that shoebox every night, there's heavy drug use going on all around your shoebox. Eventually, someone throws up on it, then pees on it, and then goes about their day. You call the city to complain, they giggle and hang up the phone. The good news is, 
Every single block has a place that sells great avocado toast. While you eat your avocado toast and drink your $8 cup of coffee, you could stare at the Golden Gate Bridge and pull hypodermic needles out of the soles of your shoes with a pair of pliers. The average home value in San Francisco is $1.2 million. The average Joe, if he was going to live there in the city, would have to spend 72% of their income on housing. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.